Hi everyone, Ben from the Microbiology Society here. I'm at the Excel Centre in London for New Scientist Live, a giant exhibition of the latest science and technology. We're going to go and have a look around now at some of the exhibits and we're going to talk to some microbiologists about their research. Hi team, I'm here with Dr Zita Martins from Imperial College London who is an astrobiologist and she's just given a talk about, about the search for life in, uh, in outer space and on other planets. So Zita, my first question then, what is astrobiology? So astrobiology is uh, a field of science where we have the contribution from different research areas. So we have a contribution from chemistry, physics, geology, uh, engineer. And the two main questions we're trying to answer in the field of astrobiology are, is there uh, extraterrestrial life out there? And also how did life started here on Earth? So you're trying to get back to, uh, I guess, is it they call it the last common ancestor? Is yes, that right? exactly. We want to, to try to find out uh, how life started. If we had contributions from comets and asteroids uh, and that contributed potentially with the building blocks of life, or whether the, the origin of life here on Earth started in deep sea vents, for example. So the asteroids are flying through space. They contain a lot of complex molecules, what sugars and things like that. And maybe that's kind of offering the seeds for, for more complex molecules to develop? So I analyze meteorites in the lab and what we've seen today is that there is a huge range of organic molecules that are present in meteorites. They range from sugars to nucleobases to carboxylic acids to hydrocarbons. So there are lots of organic molecules that are extraterrestrial and present in, in meteorites and asteroids. We also know that the Earth was heavy bombardment, that it witnessed bombardment between 4.6 and 3.8 billion years ago and this was just about before life originated on earth so it's the perfect timing you have all the comets and the asteroids bringing the building blocks of life the organic molecules to the earth and then we don't know how but life originated in our planet uh, right after that how do you get from complex molecules on a piece of rock flying through space at hundreds of thousands of miles an hour to i guess a very simple microbe probably how do you get from one to the other so we actually don't know how life originated here on Earth. It's one of the big questions in astrobiology, but it's also one of the big questions in science in general. What we know right now is that the building blocks of life, the organic molecules fundamental to life, were present on the Earth, on the primitive Earth, and then uh, the basic unit of life, the cell, was formed. How we jump from one thing to the other, we don't know. And this is actually what our field of research is trying to find out. And what about the alternative then? What about the deep sea vents? A lot of people do say that that's where, uh, where life may have originated. Um, what sort of things are you looking for there? Okay, so personally in my case, I, that's not my line of research, but my colleagues, what they're looking is uh, what's the contribution of deep sea vents for the origin of life? Which compounds could be synthesized at the bottom of our oceans? And it's very interesting to see that at the bottom of the ocean there are lots of organic uh, molecules, there's also lots of microorganisms, and there is life in there. And you wouldn't expect that because it's a very dark place where the light, the sunlight doesn't reach. So you wouldn't expect to find any life in there. And yet life exists in there. So uh, scientists in my research area are studying those life forms. They're also studying uh, deep sea vents. And some colleagues are actually building in the lab and simulating deep sea vents to try to see which organic molecules you could synthesize and, and take it from there. So that's life that's originated on Earth because something's come here, a molecule, potentially, potentially. But what about looking the other way and looking outside of the planet? What sort of experiments are going on to look for life in I don't know, on other planets or in other places? So what we do right now in our field is also to have space missions and missions to other places of our solar system, for example, Mars. Uh, we have had lots of space missions going to Mars and actually try to see if life exists on the red planet or alternatively, try to see if the conditions for life to exist uh, exist now or on the past. So for example, water. Life as we know it needs water. And so a few space missions to the red planet have actually tried to figure out if in the past Mars had oceans. And so this is the sort of research we do. We also have had uh, a few space missions to comets and asteroids and then bring back those samples uh, and actually try to see which organic molecules are present in there. Until now, it is important to say that 
no life form has been detected on, on the red planet or on those comets or asteroids. But we keep on looking, you never know. So you're not necessarily looking for direct evidence of life, but direct evidence of the things that may eventually, potentially, lead to life. There are different sorts of space missions. So you have space missions that are looking for habitability conditions, and you also have missions, and those space missions are more rare, are the ones that you're actually trying to find life. Obviously, we're not looking for little green men. We're looking for fingerprints of what life could be. So we're looking for uh, organic molecules that we know are a, a signature of life as we know it. And that's actually what planetary scientists do when you have a space mission like that. You go and you develop lots of instruments that you can take on board of that mission and that mission will eventually try to figure out if there is or if there was life in different locations of our solar system. But what do you think life would look like if we were to see it? I mean, what sort of thing would, would it appear to be? Okay, usually the public thinks that we're looking for little green men. We're definitely not looking for little green men. We're looking for microorganisms, so forms of life that are really, really small. That's what we expect to find potentially on Mars and Europa and Enceladus and in other places okay. of our solar system. In all cases, we're looking for life that is based on carbon because this is the life form, the type of life we have here on the Earth. So we have to start, it's a starting point, we have to start by what we know. So we're looking for life based on carbon. So what do you think then? What are the chances of us finding life on another planet? I really hope we find extraterrestrial life in the next 50 or 100 years. It will be the highlight of my career, but I think it will be a major discovery for uh, the scientific community and also for humans in general. It would change uh, a lot of how we see ourselves because right now we are the only ones uh, in the universe. So the planet Earth is the only one that has life. Uh, and so it will be amazing to discover other places in our solar system or even universe that have life. Zita, thank you so much. Thank you.